Join NTN for a special panel discussion series of Nation Beat, Voices of Freedom, Honoring Emancipation, historians, anthropologists, archivists, cultural icons, and everyday voices will bring you thought-provoking discussions of emancipation impact on today's society. Most people in the society have not overcome the effects of enslavement, and we're talking black and black, Indian, white, most people have not, but it would have impacted black males in a particular way. Um, but yes, I believe that the, this has to be discussed and reasoned out within the context of a society that is still resisting a lot of change where the legacy of slavery is concerned. The colonizing force was not interested in the small man, in the black man, and they effectively were ignored. One of the ironies of our time is that the time period that we refer to, the 19th, let's say from Garvey downwards, um, or even go back to Edward Blyde and them downwards, the Caribbean played a leadership role in the Pan African movement. It's kind of embarrassing because you had those westernized Caribbean people speaking for Africa, but whether or not, I don't want to go into the, a deep critique of that, but the point is the Caribbean played a leading role in Pan Africanism. Join us as we acknowledge the journey, honor the courage, resilience, and spirit of the ancestors. Voices of Freedom, Honoring Emancipation, a special Nation Beat panel series on NTN. Malcolm X asked the question, who taught you to hate yourself? And in reply, I asked Brother Malcolm, who didn't? I mean, who hasn't? Every step towards self-love as a black person is revolutionary. Every embrace of skin, every pleased inhalation, every welcome caress is defiant. Black love has always been self-taught. Keeping the memory of emancipation alive for future generations because the story of freedom is our story. The panel, the discussion, an objective and impartial view of the issues of interest to you. Nation Beat is on now. Welcome to Nation Beat Voices of Freedom. This is a special in a series of uh, panel discussions on Emancipation 2024. And we, of course, are being brought here by the Government Information Service in collaboration with the Cultural Development Foundation as St. Lucia marks another anniversary of Emancipation Day. This our third installment of this series is going to be focused on the contribution of Rastafari and the reclamation of African identity. It's going to be a discussion on Rastafari as a driving force in the affirmation and celebration of African identity within the Pan-African movement. I'm the moderator for this uh, panel today. My name is Calix George Jr. And I'm joined in studio here at the GIS by three individuals who are adherents to Rastafari. And first, I'll begin with the ladies. Uh, uh, Empress Irie Edmonds is a member of the Ayanola Council for the Advancement of Rastafari. Uh, to her left is Rasuku Augustine, a founding member of uh, Rastafari here in St. Lucia, uh, going back to the days of Iria and Ras Bongo Wisely Tafari. He is in fact the chairman of the Caribbean Rastafari organization and also an elder within the Nyabingi House here in St. Lucia. Thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us here for this program today, which is a very timely one, of course, and the discourse on the contribution of Rastafari in the whole emancipation effort or, and, of course, post-emancipation effort here in St. Lucia and around the world. Now, 
I think it's important for us to begin the conversation a little bit in terms of understanding Rastafari and its origins, where it began, what were the drivers in that regard. And perhaps I, I might, uh, because I, I have some sense that it, it started off in, in Jamaica, it started off in the 1930s, and I know you, Suku, spent some time in, in, in Jamaica at, um, in your, your formative years. Maybe you could give us a sense of some of that, the origin of Rastafari. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I, I am very grateful for this opportunity to share with your viewers, your listeners, what um, life has taught me. Um, history, history, it's often said that we, sometimes we think of history just as a recounting of the past. But history, the, there's a word called histor, historicity. It, the importance of that is who tells the story, you know? And this is something we must really view seriously because certain people, the people, who in charge of, say, the U.S. will tell you, they would refer to probably the, the indigenous people as savages, and so would they, in, you know, in, in, in Africa and this con these countries, they, they colonize. So, and they'll give you the history, but to get it, the history from the slave is not the same as the history from the, the, the master would give you. So in that regard, um, I feel it's so important to, to talk to as many people as possible when you want to really cover a subject, you know, the history of something, because no one person has the monopoly on history. Now, I want to um, <laughs> take issue first. <laughs> Not take issue, um, but just point something out to um, the moderator. He began very early in by saying the freedom now, Rastafari has changed society so much from the, the emergence of Rastafari in maybe the, the 20s, 1920s coming up there. That we did even, they did well before my time to even challenge, to, to challenge established conventional language, which we, we you know, as English speaking people and said what freedom check what does freedom mean we free but we dumb that's that 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 word should not be in our, our thing you know freedom <laughs> what was the connotations of that check it it was dumb that means you free but you dumb okay that's an example black male and black market these are good words if you're a black male it's nothing good you know you know, black market, it's a nothing good. So why black associated with, we don't use these words, you know. But um, <coughs> coming back to the substantive issue, the rudiments of thing, from my understanding eh, and other people, because Bongo Wisely lived in Jamaica too, you know. I don't know if you know that. I don't know. From what year is Bongo Wisely? 74. 74. Well, I, I was a little earlier than him, 71. And my mom, bless her soul, boy, she was so terrorized <laughs> by the thought of me going and studying in Jamaica. You know, it's like, why, why is there his shoes? You know? Why is that? Because, I mean, maybe she was, she was hearing one or two things about Jamaica, you know, that... Jamaica has always been this from Violence. yeah from colonial days you know mm -hmm. associated with you know revolution and mm -hmm. and violence and these sort of things but um <coughs> what I found that is wow it's it, it, it's so it was so different you know from what I used to know you know an example of that I mean I grew up with, you know, going to dances, Palm Beach and so on, and yeah, two tunes and, uh, you know, these kind of things. And most musicians were, you know, 
you will see them, you know, well dressed guys, and you know. And then I reach, a, I reach in an environment where I'm seeing that people revering singers that if the beard unkempt, the hair not combed, looking like what we would, we would call rough rats in St. Lucia. We used to associate that little look with rough. Rough rats were people, who, young, young boys who were homeless and, 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 and hung around the, the wharf to dive for coins when the, the tourist boat come and so on and, and hung out by the cinemas buying tickets for people and, and so on and so forth. Because this, the, these people didn't have the time to ke keep themselves kept, you know, and they, they, so I'm finding out that but how people could, you know. Uh, fascinating, because when I first saw Bob Marley, I, I mean, really, I couldn't understand the words he was singing at all. But the important thing is that now with Bob Marley and them, they found sanctuary in the university. In other words, the educated, so-called educated elite accepted the Rastafari movement even before the mainstream Jamaicans in a way. So that said to me that how important it is for in any revolution to bring in you know, young, educated people. You understand? Because if you don't have that, it's not going to get, you, you must get the momentum, you know? Because you out there, you dispossess, you're done under the culture already. You need some, you know? And I find that we were very, uh, well, not we, all of us, because the, to, to embrace Rastafari, a lot of them used to find sanctuary in, in, you know, when things get too hot for them out there on the premises in the universities, we use university, we should bring them in, mm -hmm. make them share, share our rooms with them, our food and so on and so forth. But in and out, moving in and out of the university wasn't such a problem, you know, because the crime was not a heightened thing like that. So we embraced them so in a sense that we got to learn a lot more than even the people even who they, 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 they stood up for and dwelt um, amongst, you know? And, well, that's where I found out one or two things about how this thing started. And basically, it was started by a gentleman named Leonard Percival Howell. And this gentleman, you know, he was a minister of religion, I understand. Yeah, yeah, he was a minister of religion in mm -hmm. the you know, ordinary evangelical sort of kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, but he went to Jamaica and so on. Sorry, he went um, to America. America and he joined UNIA. Mm -hmm. And he was arrested and jailed and then deported. And just for the listeners, United Negro. Yeah, UNI, 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 sorry, UNI. United Negro Improvement, Improvement Association, Association, which is which Marcus Garvey's Marcus Garvey Association. Association. Mm -hmm. And then he came back to Jamaica and, and decided to commit himself, devote himself to, um, you know, pride, black pride, you know, and, and, you know, resurgence of the black man's mm -hmm. dignity, you know, after slavery and so on. And not, all, not only that, but to tap on the, resi the maroon resilience of the resistance, maroon resistance. You understand? And, but he was, you know, his, 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 he was, I mean, immediately you had the, the trade unions, the planters, the trade unions, commerce, government, police, the churches, all these important institutions of thing, you know, come out and say, well, what is this man preaching? Anti-colonialism, because we're under uh, colonialism still. Mm -hmm. This thing could be dangerous for us. So, you know, d don't, don't pay much attention to him. Don't arrest him yet, because that will bring more attention to him. So, they let him do his thing. And when he... Um, proceeded to have his meetings. At first, they didn't take him on, but 
gradually, you know, gradually as he learned to, the, 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 to have the gift of gab to talk because even like Bob, Ma um, not Bob Marley, um, Marcus Garvey started off, he wasn't very articulate. In fact, when he was making his first speech, he fell, fell to the ground on his face, you know. He was so nervous. And he went, he actually learned to speak to our audience, to a white man, a white evangelist, you know, in this time. This guy is his fellow's fiery, in, uh, in, and, and he learned that. So, um, thing, um, Percival Howell, I went through the same kind of thing, and then the thing started gaining momentum. This is when they started charging him with sedition, you know, conspiracy against the state to, to galvanize people to ride revolt against the system and so on and so, so forth. But, you know, this is my understanding of the rudiments. Now, he wasn't the only one, but he's the most prominent one name. You know, you would hear when talking about the, the rudiments of um, the genesis of, of the, the, the movement. Mm -hmm. And you had people like um, Archibald um, Hibbert. Um, yeah, and this kind of yeah, others, others, there were others, you know, many others, maybe history own uh, thing the Someone names. forgotten, right? Yeah, you know, but um, yeah, and, because and you you said you got to Jamaica in 1971, uh -huh. so effectively, the movement had already been around for over yeah. a generation now. Yeah, 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 man. How aware of of Rastafari were you in Saint Lucia before you? Went but that's what I'm telling you, Jamaica. there was virtually no awareness of that. Mm -hmm. There was so much no awareness of that, that the reggae music we used, we used to get was, we were not aware that I was, I mean, we loved it, like, by, um, what's this guy named that thing? John Jones, son of a gun. Desmond um, Decker. No, no. Well, Desmond Decker was one of the first that um, made it internationally. But there was this guy who used to be in Byron thing, but his music was very popular, mm -hmm. you know. Hello, Carol, I'm depending on you. People see me acting strange. You know, he sang a lot of songs and he used to like it. He used to play it Byron Lee. Byron Lee was the band that's known. Mm -hmm. And that's reggae first. Mm -hmm. When I went up there, when I mentioned that name to the people, I was, you all don't know him, um, this guy, what's his name again? Anyway, his, guy, his name eludes me. And people say, who? They say to me, I'm a pirate. You know what that means? I'm a pirate. He's a pirate. Mm -hmm. So what he does was, what, he, what these people used to do, the people with the privilege that accepted out there in their suave and slick manner that playing music, used to pirate the creation, mm -hmm. you know? That's how you know, thing were, you know, that's how hard it was. You go to a studio, you have a hit, because these people, what was coming up in the midst of all that tribulation, was coming out a kind of history, a kind of poetry, mm -hmm. a kind of music, a kind of harmony, a kind of love. That we didn't know that at all. You heard that Elvis Presley to some extent, right? Kind of taking music from. Uh, yeah, African yeah, Americans yeah, 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 it's fed from over that, it's fed from that, yeah, yeah that's, yeah. What, that's why Elvis is so great, Elvis yeah. never made no apologies for that, you know, Elvis is a great man, you know, but because he acknowledged that, he didn't run from that, he acknowledged that, so these guys used to take that and go out there and market it like their stuff, mm -hmm. but the ordinary Jamaicans used to see them as pirates, because that's what we, they were, because while well, these guys are making nothing, these guys are making nothing for the music. These guys, these pirates were out there making a lot of things. Mm -hmm. thing. mm -hmm. So we did know, well, I don't know if other people knew. There are one, two people who knew something, you know, by virtue of traveling on, uh, on the, um, we had two boats. That is yeah, the, the Federation boats. Right. And, 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 and the Federal Palm. Palm. Palm and Maple that used to go from Jamaica and travel right throughout the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You pick up people anywhere and go reach Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And then one or two guys used to come back with stories, you know. Well, yeah. we're going to have to explore that in those, those yeah, very yeah, formative yeah, that days of yeah, yeah. uh, Rastafari. But we actually do for our first break. 
So okay. we're going to be taking it at this time. So stay tuned. Nous seulement nous ça fait timide. Là nous pas qu'on nous seulement messieurs chaque la capli loup sans aider nous pas qu'il ça fait. Là nous venir ensemble qu'on commune nous ça accomplit si tellement en pile en pile en pile. Les vies santé et sécurité qu'il fait à si oui qui tout simplicien qui a joué une bonne qualité santé, qui a pu, qui résonne. Ça n'a pas un nique en taxe ou ça. Ça, c'est investissement nous en occupation santé, tout simplicien. Ensemble, nous avons fait tant qu'il a venu primaire, côté occupation santé, c'est un droit tout simplicien mérité. Welcome back to Nation Beat Voices of Freedom. I'm using that word, <laughs> it is in the title. And uh, of course, we are focused on emancipation and the contribution and reclamation of African identity, the role of Rastafari in that journey. And of course, this is part of Emancipation 2024. We were just speaking to Ras Suku uh, about his journey uh, and giving us some sense of the history and the early beginnings. Um, of Rastafari in Jamaica uh, from the early 70s and uh, the ignorance of the rest of the Caribbean and at least in St. Lucia would mm -hmm. appear at that point in terms of um, the Rastafarian movement. Now, of course, we did hear um, earlier on that um, Marcus Garvey was a very major player in terms of the Pan-African movement. He visited St. Lucia, as we heard, in the 1930s and other Caribbean islands and, and of course, North America. Um, but clearly, the role of Rastafari in taking that message of Marcus Garvey, popularizing it, um, is, is without dispute. Ras Bongo, you also, as of course uh, Ras Suku mentioned, uh, spent some time in, in Jamaica in the 70s. But before that, I mean, what drove you to even go to Jamaica? And tell us about your story and introduction to Rastafari. Yes, I greetings in the name of His Divine Majesty, Kudamawi, Haile Selassie, and Empress Menem. Yes, grand rising to all our listeners, our viewers, wherever you may be. Yes, I give thanks. Well, what led me to Jamaica was my love for agriculture. So then from St. Mary's College, I started working with the Ministry of Agriculture. Then I got a scholarship to go to Jamaica to study agriculture. And well, by when I left St. Lucia in 74, Rastafari was already here. You know, it had already started springing up, you know. But in terms of Rastafari, Rastafari is a spirit which, as it says, lives forever started in Africa and well due to transatlantic slave trade where Africans were captured and brought to the West, the spirit of, of Rastafari came and it evolved and manifested in Jamaica in the early 1920s, 1930s. And it was again Leonard Percival Howell who who was instructed by some of the Israelis. When I say Israelis, I'm not referring to the Zionist people, the true Israelites, who told him about the coronation of His Majesty in 1930. And from there, Leonard Howell started proclaiming the divinity of His Majesty, because Rastafari was already in Jamaica reading the Bible and reading about, you know, the prophecies and so on. So then they realized that that was a fulfillment of prophecy, the coronation of His Majesty. Because there was a, a pastor, Pastor Webb, I think he was from an Anglican background in the States, who prophesied look to Africa for the coming of a king, the crowning of a king. Now, most of us equate that to Marcus Garvey, but Marcus Garvey is not the author of that statement. No, it was Pastor Webb. Mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey took it on and mm -hmm. promoted it, you know. 
how well came through with that same philosophy and in going to the scripture they realize that this is the fulfillment of the prophecy we spoke of in Acts chapter 2 where it says I will raise up Christ to sit upon the throne of David so there they realize well yes that is the fulfillment because the throne of David is not no invisible throne it was a throne on on earth and it was identified or recognized by the red gold and green which is the same rainbow and sigma so there again they realize yes that is the fulfillment of prophecy so leonard howell as a man who had traveled to latin america and america and those places he came and then he established what was known as pinnacle which is the first Rastafari commune. And from there, you know, they started, you know, working, doing agriculture, doing arts and craft, in terms of, you know, being self-determination for, for the black people, the, the people in Jamaica who were enslaved, mm -hmm. because emancipation came. And remember, during emancipation, it was only the slave masters who were compensated. So the Africans had nothing. They had to start from scratch. You know, so Leonard Howell was very instrumental in establishing that community where people could come in, do agriculture, do arts and craft, do music, different other forms to sustain the, their livelihoods. You know, and it is through that, the, the spirit of Rastafari continued to grow and develop and improve. You know, it, it, it continued until, well, even as Brother Suku say, you know, Leonard Howell is considered one of the most persecuted Rastafari because during the, that time when King George was being promoted as the king for black people, Leonard Howell said, no, King George is not our king. Haile Selassie is our king. And, you know, he was charged for treason. He was sent to the asylum. He was brutalized, you know, everything. Even Pinnacle was decimated eventually. It started in the 1930s. And by 1955, Pinnacle was wiped out mm -hmm. due to police invasion. And the success of Pinnacle is something which you don't even see today within Rastafari communities. Mm -hmm. The success which they had, because when police raided Pinnacle, they found cash, monies, which the, Afri the people were collecting and saving and utilizing for their survival and for the continuation of their liberty. You know, and all of these things was brutal and then now eventually after everybody was scattered then you have the coming of different mansions like the Nyabingi, the Bobo Shanti, the 12 tribes, all of these ki came up, you know. So in terms of Rastafari, as we say, Rastafari is an indigenous spirit from Africa. And the Africans who embrace that spirit of Rastafari, they realize, well, uh, to fight against colonialism, because colonialism was the order of the day following emancipation. The colonial masters, they were imposing, they, they controlled the education system, they controlled the economics of, of the time, and so on. Now, even going forward to when we speak of the education and the economics of the system at the time, colonial rule. We go back to the Nicene Conference in 325 BC, where Constantine yes. uh -huh. tried to bring the whole world under one domination, under Roman control. But there were, the, as I say this, the Rastafari people at the time, though they may not have been called Rastafari at that time, but that same spirit of resistance 
and rebellion against colonialism. They were the ones who, who stood up and they were persecuted again. You know, so it continues up to this time. Hence the reason when Rastafari started appearing on the scene in Jamaica, the colonial governments tried to eradicate Rastafari. We, we're speaking about emancipation here, and we think 1833, that date. Yeah. And then we're now hearing about the 1930s. But mm -hmm. for a lot of uh, people, there isn't perhaps that recognition that Africa was actively being colonized in the 1920s, in the 1930s, during that period of time. And colonialism started with, remember the Berlin Conference? Right, in, in 1840, 1890, 1882, 1896, thereabout, where Europe came together and recognizing the re resources, the riches of Africa, they, like, a, like a pizza, they took peace. England take a piece, France take a piece, Belgium take a piece, Germany, you know, and so on. Ethiopia was the only one who maintained its identity. Because initially the whole continent was named Ethiopia, you know. It was also named al Kibulan, Kush, you know, these names. But the colonial people divided it and they come with Nigeria, Uganda, Tanzania, and all those different countries. That's from 1896 at the Berlin Conference. Now, even at the Berlin Conference, you had what was known as the Charter of Imperialism, which was established. And one of the, the first articles within the Charter of Imperialism was to recognize the divide and conquer, that they realized that the resources, the wealth of the world, that they, those cabals or those Romans, you know, and so on, they are the ones who are supposed to control those resources. Hence the reason why they divided Africa in all those different little states and so on, to be able to exercise their control. You know, so it's, it's from that time and as I say, the spirit of Rastafari was there long before that. Because remember, Africa is the cradle of civilization. Those of us who read our Bible would know well from the beginning, everything, the I say, everything that the Almighty made, it was good. So your journey to Rastafari, you were not a Rastafarian when you went to Jamaica. No. You, you, you in fact became a Yes. Member. Yeah, I, I pick up during that stage, and then when I return here, I kind of consolidated it. What was the yeah. response like in, in the 1970s during that time, coming back to St. Lucia? Well, trying to, I mean, form an area, for instance, um, oh. Rasuko, you were on in that time. What was the, the I mean, I mean, we, we heard about some I, of the I stories, could, but I, I think I could, it's important to put it on the record. The organization of Rasta, because, I mean, I was there from the outset of it, you know. But to back up on what you say, not to um, you know, conflict with her, but even before that, when they were 15 something, when they had the, is it the Treaty of Tordesillas or something? Tordesillas, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Where they had di divided the, the whole into two between the Portuguese and the Spanish. The Portuguese and the Spanish. Mm -hmm. So this thing kind of colonialism there before, long before they had their official things in Berlin in the 18 something or whatever. This kind of thing of just dividing people, the whole world belong to them, the Caucasians. You know? yeah. But um, in, in St. Lucia, when I returned from Jamaica, you know, I, you know and my view is that you know, I, I, I observed what was creeping in in Jamaica and what occupied uh, too much time and uh, you know and, and, and resources of of rastas uh, it was um, it, it became denominational so to speak this house versus that house you remember he tell you about the emergence of houses and um, yeah. Prince Emmanuel Edward here Nyabingi house there 12 tribes there and all of them and 
holding their positions, their interpretations. It's just like Anglican Catholic, and you know, because you know, Catholic had some wars with Anglican, and with um, then after that, the you know, with um, the so called Lutheran and mm -hmm. Pentecostal. Pentecostal kind of thing. And it, these wars were savage, you know, these things that cause people to run away and go and in America and all that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's the extent of these kind of things. Because we see it between Sunni and Shia, even in uh, Islamic religion, the, the sex. And I notice that and I say to myself, boy, I not on that, you know, really. I, you know, I, 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 I couldn't be on that to say I belong to this house or that house. You know what? I, I, I believe in the unification. Okay? You know, if well, the foundation, the foundation of Rastafari is the teachings, Hilti words and teachings are the foundation of Rastafari. His, his name is Rastafari, you know. Mm -hmm. That's how I, if anybody asks me about Rastafari, you know, I don't know too much about before. And, and all these kind of things, you know? I mean, obviously, uh, even the scriptures, I love my scriptures, I read my scriptures, but it's subject to interpretation. Hail Selassie teachings, you know, and his works are not subject to interpretations. They are absolute, and I, 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 I deal with that. I deal with that, too. So, so what I'm saying now, my job is to try and maybe if I have anything meaningful to contribute, is to bring all these diverse kind of things. Let us look at ourselves as Rastafarians, as Rastafarians, trying to bring, put the teachings of his imperial majesty on education, on religion, whatever issue. Because he speaks on everything because his experience and his knowledge he, he still, still has, he don't speak to his people or his friends or in, to the, 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 the people in the United Nations, you know. When he still has, he utter, he speaks to the whole world, you know. He, he know. So in a sense, his word now, that's why the Rastas talk about word, song, and power. So we ke I came back. Things, you know, we were going about our business. We had, I, I tried my best to be in organization because here's the last year, glorify organization. We must organize, and you know. So, and, you know, it's like, you know, Rasta was putting fire on everything. Organization, education. And I said, but how could I put fire on education? I'm educated. I'm privileged. Let me see how I could use my education to uplift others. I can put fire on education. Mathematics is accepted and standard of the whole world. You know, they have nothing like English mathematics, Ethiopian mathematics, or Chinese mathematics. So what we say in here, that we, it, it cannot be fire for everything. Let us look at the teachings to get guidance on these matters where we have disputes. You know, that is what I was all about. So I got together with certain brethren, all, you know, from all walks of life. You had former um, war frats, you know, people who had dropped out of school, people who had dropped out of the employment, whatever. And youths, young youths come in, you know, and try and bring them together. And we brought them together in, 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 in an organization called I. RIA, IRIA, Ayanola Rastafari Improvement Association. And we really launched at what you call, we had a block rama, we, I call it an idol rama in the gardens, Georgia Vif Park, where everything, everything, we, we, we didn't use metal, everything was earthen, with the wood, the wood, wood, creation, everything. We used, in that idol rama, we had no salt, no sugar. And you know, that, that's the genesis, that's the beginning of, of um, uh, June Equiol, you know. They didn't have June Equiol yet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we start June Equiol down here, you know, but history will not give us any credit for that. 
And we're talking about Creole, that was Creole. And if you see people, the police, they send the, they deploy the police there to come and stop us. And Charlie's Blaze so much that day there, the police just couldn't have arrest anybody. By the end of the day, the police were fighting to get dolls, half-cooked dolls to eat. I mean, that was a glorious day. I tell Rama. Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, the organization began, <laughs> you know? The importance of, of unity. I mean, all, yeah. all movements will have their divisions, yeah, no yeah, doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, that's where uh, it started. And we want to definitely explore yeah. that a little bit more. We are actually due for our second and final break. Uh, we, of course, uh, you know, Empress Irene, we're technique. coming to you. Yeah. I, I, oh, sorry, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're coming to you, we're coming to you, um, because, of course, uh, you're the future, and we want to definitely get um, some of your She's sense as well. Yeah. So we'll be right back after this. She's our, our Suicidal our thoughts, mother. like other mental health challenges, can affect anyone. It can be you, your colleague, family member, or neighbor. Everyone has a role to play in preventing suicide. Know the warning signs. If you or someone you know is in crisis or emotional distress, call the suicide hotline at 203. Remember, help is available. This is a message from the Employee Assistance Program, Department of the Public Service. Contact us at 468-2269 or 468-2260. Welcome back to Nation Beat and this special production of the Government Information Service for Emancipation 2024. We're looking at the role of Rastafari in the reclamation of African identity. We've been talking quite a lot about the history, the formation of Rastafari, uh, but I want to definitely speak to the importance of Rastafari right now. I mean, in terms of uh, the, the current state of play, there's a great level of um, more appreciation now than maybe 40 years ago in terms of what Africa is, what it represents to us. And Empress Aili, we haven't heard your, your, your take on it as yet. Um, you're a little younger, well, perhaps a lot younger than these gentlemen here. Um, your take as to where Rastafari is now, especially given all the, the, the changes that we're seeing, uh, and we're now talking about reparations openly, we're now talking about repatriation and, and links with Africa, Afri X in Bank in the Caribbean, all of these things. Where are we at now? Um, greetings, Ayanola. Yeah, um, I think first of all, we should give thanks to the elders from Leonard Howell down to my elders, Suku and Bongo Wisely, and the rest of the elders who were there who paved that road and gave us that foundation to be able to stand up here as Rastafari people. Maybe some of us have different, slight different beliefs in different things, but we have that one common goal of unity of Rastafari mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And in, the, in its general, the, our nation, our black nation, mm -hmm. to become that humanitarian you know, aspect of what unity and love is. Mm -hmm. And that is the foundation Absolutely. that our elders set for us. And for me, I am taking it from there. And it, Rastafari is a, a revolution that continues to evolve. So you find that the younger people will not most times tie their hair all the time. They will style up. They will wear different clothes from our elders. But it does not show that they are not Rastafari. It shows they, that they have moved forward and the times has changed. So we still need to continue with the unification that our elders set for us. And that is the way we are lacking as a people. Because, for instance, we need to have that understanding that unity is the key to what we are speaking of. And what we are speaking of is not just a word. For it to happen, it has to become a manifestation. And I believe it is a universal manifestation. Mm -hmm. It is not a manifestation of, manifestation of one people. It is a manifestation of all people 
I see it as Rastafari spearheading that, that um, level of organization because of where they've been, what they have taught us, how to live, how to eat, no matter your size, your way of life, your, your aspect. If you eat healthy, you, you drink enough water, you, you, you will be strong and you will be able to go through it in life. And Rastafari is the founders of teaching us how to eat our greens, utilize what is around us, you know? And I have been around the elders for a long time. I have been there and the elders have set good foundation. For us as a people, we need to embrace our history. We need to embrace our ancestors. We need to know about our cosmic energies. We need to know about the universal balance these are the things that Rastafari has been teaching for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that the system, or I do not want to accuse anybody, but mm -hmm. per se has been keeping us from being aware mm -hmm. of that level of power that we have as a people. Mm -hmm. So they keep us in the mindset that we have to keep creating power and giving power to what they said and not our reality, which is our story, not his story, mm -hmm. but our story as an African people, our ancestral story, which is mostly important that we embrace their way of life, what they taught us, and still bring it into modernization and continue that genetic, that bloodline, that story that came from way back to the slave trade and to us being here today. Now let me ask you because as I said the world has changed so much since the 1930s and even the 70s yeah. and the discrimination. Uh, we're still seeing discrimination of course yes. now Black Lives Matter all these movements but we're not at a point where you have marijuana finding mm -hmm. global acceptance in terms of, of use. You're now at a point where everybody's talking about eating healthy organic foods. Yeah. Uh, and you've got that whole movement, even veganism is, mm -hmm. is becoming a lot more popular. You're now at a point where the vice chancellor of the um, University of the West Indies is talking about reparations, yes. and we're seeing this yeah. conversation about reparations even in Europe and other parts of the world, you know, about African reparations. These are all Rastafarian messages mm -hmm. for many, many, many years. Uh, there must be a sense of, of vilification that Rasta feels that, look, look at what we've been telling you. We've told you so, we told you so, mm -hmm. we told you so. But are you seeing, as a result of that, a resurgence of interest in Rastafari? Yes. I see a resurgence of our people getting to know their self. I see a resurgence of our youth, even as careless as they may be, but they are consciously black or consciously melanated that they appreciate themselves more and this is where it begins and like i say i will always give thanks to the elders for creating that foundation for today i am aware who i am as a queen and i know when i watch my sister over there i see another black queen you understand what i'm saying so it is it, it has brought us to that level where our young people has become more away and they put in more manifestation because everything is negative and positive yes the negative might hit the news more mm -hmm. but that positive is also there where our people know themselves we grow our hair we use less chemical we try and do makeup that is more natural because because it's part of our art as african people to be able to do makeups and and, and drawings and diff it, is, it, is, it is ours. This is not a European thing. This is not a European thing. This has been there way back with my ancestors using the right thing. That's why they, they could not get cancer, cancers and different things because they were using the right product to create the right thing to bring our people where they are supposed to be, you know? Thanks so very much for sharing with us, uh, Ras, Ras IB. Uh, Empress IB. I, I want to ask a general question too in terms of um, Africa. 
uh, Africa is where it's happening. This, we, people are saying that this century is a century of Africa. What is the role of Rastafari in liberating Africa? I don't know who wants to tackle that one. Well, in terms of liberating Africa, well, as we say, it's colonialism which kind of in bondage Africa. And in terms of the liberation with the OAU, when the OAU was established in 1963, and Krumah, His Majesty, mm. Jomo Kenyatta, all those forefathers, one of the aims of the OAU was to fight against colonialism in any form in which it would present itself. But today what we see happen is that when we feel that we've gotten rid of colonialism, we are now entrapped in neo-colonialism. Mm -hmm. You see, so that is where the, the, the battle is now, to fight against neo-colonialism. As we, even when we look at what's happening in the Sahel countries in Africa, that is the fight against neo-colonialism. Because with neo-colonialism, what the colonialists did, that they implanted our own people who were brainwashed to continue the same dirty, contaminated theories. So these leaders became like puppets to the colonial masters. Hence the reason we are still entangled today. And these are the things Rastafari has been clamoring for to get rid of neo-colonialism, self-determination, you know? The, the way, even as Rastafari, the way we've changed our names, we've changed our dressing, we've changed the way we, our culture has changed, meaning we're getting rid of the colonial aspect and going back to what we would refer to as the spirit of Ubuntu. Because His Majesty told us that we need to become members of a new race where our allegiance is no longer to, to the different states or nation, but to humanity, to the man and woman within the, communi the human community, where we all see ourselves as equal. You know, I, none is higher yeah. than the other. Th thanks for that, Ras, Ras Bongo. Yeah, I think you have a point as well to add to what he's saying. Well, that's, he, that's he, he, I'm, I'm happy he started me. He, he ended where I'm, I, I wanted to start. Mm -hmm. To me, this thing gone past colonialism already, you know. Mm -hmm. It's gone black past black, you know. Black supremacy or any kind of supremacy, you know. It's gone beyond religion or, or, or denomination right. already. It's like it's, it's humanity. Until the color, the philosophy that holds one race superior and another inferior. It is totally abandoned and discredited until there are no first, second and first class, third class citizens of any country. Until the basic human rights are equally guaranteed. So you see where he's going? To all without regard to race, religion, creed, whatever. You know? Unt you know, until that day, the dream of lasting peace, world citizenship, will remain but a fleeting illusion to pursue, but never attain. No pastor teaching that. No teacher in a classroom not teaching that. No politician not quoting that. So, we, 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 and we're talking about colonialism, who holding us down? England ain't holding us down. We pass England, uh, uh, America ain't holding, you know. These people not holding us down. Colonialism, we, that, we pass that. So we're holding ourselves back right we're now. We're holding, we, because when, our, we, you know, we cannot blame and say, boy, for if, if this, I have to do that, I have to be, what, what's, what's happening to, to, to our politicians? You know? What's happening to them? You know? You, you, the same... You know, sometimes you go to a thing and, you know, who is the head there to bless the meeting and thing? Boom, boom, boom. The Catholic Church. I have nothing the against the Catholic Church. I respect them. I respect all the nominations. But tell me, the same people that bless the Mussolini forces going 
to, 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 to commit genocide in Ethiopia. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that happened, you know, that happened, you know. You can't read that in a Bible or nothing like that, you know. So what happened to us? It's like by design, we talk about, you, hey, you see the way we're going, including our intellects and academics and things? They don't want, you know, our creative people. There's been so many movies made about this and that. You ever see a movie on Ethiopia? You ever, you know, they tell us, you know, they have a field of study called Egyptology, where they study mm -hmm. Egypt. Egypt is anything by Ethiopia. Egypt is fed, survived Baby because of Ethiopia, Ethiopia yeah. the Nile that bringing down water for them. Mm -hmm. You know? And everything is about, these people had no mountains, they had to build a pyramid where they bury people, the great kings. And we spent, yeah, well, let's go and study that in school, Egyptology. Whereas the people in Ethiopia naturally live in the mountains. We have natural mountains. We don't have to build no, no, no um, pyramid to prove we're great. But you see, there's a, by design, we don't pay attention to Ethiopia, the only country on earth that's never been colonized. You understand? And then His Imperial Majesty come and speak and forgive everybody, everybody that ever do him any harm, that do his nation, that bring his people to the, and he say, okay, what we need to do is that, you know, just every hungry, we shouldn't have hungry people. We shouldn't have hungry people. You know, the Europe, <laughs> Europe ice cream bill could feed the world, you know, could educate the world, you know. The bill, what they spend on ice cream. So we've gone beyond colonialism. Th thanks for that point, uh, Rasuku. Empress Ivy. I think I, I have to agree with um, Rasuku that we are the ones keeping ourselves yeah. Yeah. into we that state. Because man, colonialism, kind of like I said yeah. earlier, yeah. everything starts within. So we now have to uncolonialize ourselves from within. Mm. And then we will be able to watch every brother or every sister as equal. You know, and that's where unification comes. And if we are able to colonialize ourselves, then we do not need a holiday for emancipation because we will actually be free. Exactly. We will have a <laughs> mind that will be able to function on its own in that functioning, I will think of Calix. I will think of Bongo Wisely. I will not think of myself. So it will be a well-balanced mind. To be free, you have to be able to be well-balanced in your mindset, the way you do things, the manifestation of your actions. There is no judging, no undermining, no level in being a well-balanced person. That is where freedom lies. And if, if we become a people of, that accept that we are both negative and positive, and we're not looking to just be a good man. If you are just a good man, you're not a balanced person. <laughs> because if somebody is coming and take away my daughters or doing something to them, there is no form of goodness that will save me from that. Instantly, my negative that energy is. has to take over to defend, build that defense mechanism for my right, youth. It's the right thing. So we need to be a balanced people mm. where we know yeah. what to bring out from each other. Really, really. I, I can bring so. out the most amazing thing there from the sister just because of the way I come to her, mm. the energies I make her receive. Mm. You know, so we have to watch unification from just we being together as a people, but heartically, lovingly, spiritually inclined, which is most important. And that is where we will attain freedom. If we become a people like that, we do not need those holidays. <laughs> we need no remembrance of like anything that. because like we are already a people that remember. Yeah, yeah. Like that. So we know we know from the past, the lineage, the genes, the blood brought it here to us. So we know what we are about in the future because the foundation is already set. 
Thanks very much for that, that Empress that Ivy. <laughs> now, we've got only a few minutes left to go um, already for this program. It's been quite wonderful as we've been exploring the, the impact of Rastafari so on, on St. Lucia, on the world, <laughs> and of course on, on identity. I'm just going to give each individual some time just to um, share with us your parting thoughts. Ras Bongo. Yes, well, as we said earlier, on the, <coughs> the original spirit of Ubuntu, where humanity is, is where our allegiance is to humanity, that is what is required, and that is what Rastafari is promoting. I mean, there are one, two who, due to lack of knowledge, might fall short, but the ultimate aim and the ultimate goal is, as His Majesty say, unity is the accepted goal. And for that unity to be functional, we need to have that level of tolerance, patience, and goodwill towards one another. And that is how we will really make that unity functional in this time. Thanks so very much, Ras Bongo, yeah. wisely. Ras Suku, unity? Yeah, he, well, until we praise in human and malicious self-interest with goodwill, tolerance, and understanding, you know, that, that's like, uh, just echoing what he said, and I, I just want to appreciate being among my brethren and my sister in there and listening to them, uh, you know, and um, I've been enlightened so much again, you know, you know, it's continuous, you know, and I, yeah, I, I just hope that, you know, we'll continue that kind of trend of thought and not just hold it to ourselves, but articulate it more. That's what I find. I always tell, I always tell my Adrian and my sister, come on, we have our story to tell. Let us, let us tell our story. Let us tell our story. We're holding back too much because we are the ones that were chosen to do that work. We have to tell our stories, whichever way, if it has to come in literature, if it has, has to come in um, music. You know, when, I, when me and Getru decided to get into Calypso, we were chastised so badly. Them fellas, we are wrong, go around, drink, wrong, fellas drinking rum and thing. But you know, one of the things that keep us back a lot, we had reached a stage. We only preaching to the converted. So every day you go among the same set of so people. So you were Paul to the Gentiles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, you know, you, you go among your own people and you preach. Bam, 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 bam. Every day everybody saying the same thing, the same thing. And you're afraid to go in, in, in government offices because you, these people fighting you down. You're afraid to go. In Calypso 10, these people drinking rum and this thing. But then what, what, what is the strength of, your, of, of, of your, your philosophy, your theocracy, whatever, if you don't want to go and, and espouse it? So I, I am just hoping that more of my brethren and my sister will come out and be part of the community by expressing themselves and that's why I try to live a life of balance, you know, in football, more to bad guy. Yeah, Thank you so very much, yeah, Rasu, for that contribution. Really everything. important point, though, yeah. of engagement of community. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to say, like, we do have to embrace the Ubuntu way of life, which is an ancestral way of life. And, and the Ubuntu way of life created unity amongst our ancestors. That's why we can sit here today and talk about them. They created a special way of life, a spiritual, a special spiritual lineage for us as a people. We're not just going to say Ubuntu. Ubuntu means overstanding, balance, knowing what is within the universe and the, the, and it be in tune with creation. That is how our ancestors live. That's why they live longer than us. That's why they were more knowledgeable than us. They had more patient. They raised their children better. They had better, be, a better life in spite of all the luxury we have today because we disown or we unlearn 
that way of life. That is why we are here today. But if we as a people, not just Rastafari, as a people entirely embrace the way, the Ubuntu way of our ancestors, we will have a better place, a better world, a better universe, and a better people. We will become free. We will not need those holidays again. I love that. So we give thanks. We give <laughs> thanks for life. We give thanks to GIS mm -hmm. and we give thanks to Ayanola for listening and and we give thanks for the awareness. Yes. Blessed love. Thank you so Thank very you much, much Empress yeah, Ivy okay. Edwards, uh, Ras Suku Augustine, <laughs> Ras Bongo Wisely Tafari. Yeah. Thank you gentlemen and lady for a wonderful discourse on the impact uh, of Rastafari on the emancipation pan-African movement. Um, right in St. Lucia, of course, and around the world. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the program. I know we've just scratching the surface quite often in these programs, but uh, we are there many more to come, and we do hope that you'll continue to listen to the GIS. It's been Nation Beat. Have a good one.